Hi, this tutorial is one of three from my friend Judy who would like to 3D print a roller with raised reverse letters so that she can transfer those letters later on to clay in her classroom. And so this is what we're going to end up making, something like this. You can see the letters are raised so that when, when it's rolled it um, will dig into the clay and the letters are reversed so that when it prints out the, the negative space will, will be able to be read. All right, so this is what we're going to end up with. Okay, so let me just rotate them. I know I want to make a, a circle along the red axis. So I'm just going to delete that guy. Start with my circle. You can see it's red there. I'm just going to stretch it out to some distance. I want it to be a 100 sided circle, so I type in 100S, hit enter. That's going to make the circle smooth. And then I also want the circle to be 60. Um, millimeters uh, wide, uh, uh, radius rather. I'm just arbitrarily coming up with these values, but the thickness of my letters, uh, let's say I want it to be 10 millimeters or one centimeter. So I'm going to make my uh, my first circle 60. The cylinder I'm going to end up with is 50. So I make the first one a little bigger than, than is needed. I'm going to push pull it out to some distance like that. We may have to change that. And then I'm going to enter my 3D text. It's going to be rather large here, 30 millimeters, 12 millimeter extruded. Uh, it doesn't really matter about that. You can always scale it and then whatever text you want. I'm just going to place it here on the deck. Like so, orient. I'm going to move. I'm going to do a lot of moving here and, and confining my movements to particular axes. To do that you simply uh, click M or the move button, click on the thing you want to move, and then the, the right mouse button will confine it to the red axis, the left, the green, and the up um, or down arrow to the blue. Okay, So that's an important, important little tidbit to learn, and that's good enough for government work there. Now, um, because I want the letters to be, to be reversed, uh, and upright, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Again, choose my move tool, and that gives me these red crosses here. I can grab one of them, rotate it. Uh, if you can't snap it right to 90, or if you don't, if you if you're not certain if it's 90 degrees, you can always tell the angle down here. So again, I grab the move tool, and oops, darn it. And you can see the little um, crosshairs here on the top. You can rotate this now 180 degrees. This is going to reverse the face. And again, I'm looking down there at my numbers to make sure I get 180 degrees. Okay. The idea here is we're going to make a shell here. That's that's a 10 millimeters thick. We're going to then sm uh, run this thing right up through it, and then we're going to uh, we're going to take the intersection of those of that union. And then we can apply that then to a new cylinder. I should have mentioned that for this, you have to have SketchUp Pro. You have to have solid tools. Okay, so it looks like it's going to work. The next thing I need to do now is come here to the center, grab my circle tool. Um, did you see how uh, it didn't pick up the center? If you hover over the edge of your circle, it knows that you you want to play with this particular thing and then it will uh, find the center for you. So I'm just going to pull out some arbitrary amount and then type 50. Okay, The outer circle is 60, the inner circle is 50, therefore my thickness is 10. I'm going to now push-pull that inner circle. This is a cute little trick here. So I'm going to push-pull it, and I've clicked it one time, and now I'm not hanging on to the button anymore. But if I come over here and I hover just on the edge, the endpoint there, it will snap to that endpoint. Then I can click, finish clicking the, the, the button, and now I have an empty, an empty hole there. Okay. All right. So here I want to move this guy here to the face. Oh, oh! Before I do that, I forgot. I need for the solid tools to work. I need to make my tube here be solid. So right click. Uh, highlight the, highlight every all aspects of the tube, or you can simply triple click the tube, right click, and say make group. Okay. 
Okay, solid tools won't work unless the unless the pieces are grouped or components. All right. So now I'm going to take this guy here. I'm going to move it close by. I'm I'm probably going to need to stretch it a little bit, make it thicker. The thickness here doesn't matter so much as long as it's thicker than the than the wall. Um, and I'm going. What I've done here is I've clicked clicked on my lettering, press S for scale, and then I'm just going to grab that middle handlebar, which is going to stretch, extrude my letters even more. And now I'm going to rotate here, kind of get it lined up. This is you can eyeball this. Pretty good there. And you can see that if I zoom in that the top may be a little more curvy than the bottom, so I want to make sure that that's um, confined along the blue axis. I'm just going to move that down until it looks like that the top is about as curvy as the bottom. This is going to make it sit nicely on my on my cylinder that we're about to make here in a second. Okay, so now we have an intersection of two solid pieces, the letters and the tube. I've highlighted the letters. Now what I want to do is, uh, if you don't have the solid tool toolbar up, go to View, Toolbars, and then make sure that solid tools are showing. And then I'm going to choose the intersection. So I've highlighted my letters. I choose intersect, and then it gives me a, a two. Then I, now I need to find the other group that I want to intersect with, which is the which is the tube itself. So I click on that. It takes a second or so to run through all the mathematics, and then what's left is the intersected piece. It's gotten rid of everything else except for the stuff that was intersected. Okay, and there we have our curved pieces, and this this edge here. This edge here, this inner edge, will fit on a 50 uh, millimeter radius circle. All right, and because I've done all my work on the origin, it's set and ready to go right there. So now all I have to do is grab the circle again, make it an arbitrary size, type in 50, hit enter, push pull it. Oops, sorry, sorry. Undo is your friend. Redo is even better. What have I done? Okay. So push pull it out something like that. Oh, even more. Like that. And it should be right on our letters. Just like that. So now we can highlight this piece here, make that a group, print it, and you've got yourself a roller. That says intertext, of course, whatever else you want to say. Just to show you that intertext is in fact on the uh, on the cylinder, I'm going to choose this section pane. Come back here, just to choose a section. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to move this section pane, and it doesn't get rid of this. It just allows you to see into things, and you can see that that these funky colors um, tell you that, the, that this is an interface between two surfaces, the surface of my letters and the surface of the cylinder. There you go. This works best if your letters are along the, the length of the tube longitudinally printed. If you, if you want to, you can break apart, explode the letters, one by one move them around the, the face uh, around the, uh, the the circle, if you wanted to roll them in a, in another way, but uh, there's actually a, a better way to do that. In method three, I show you what that method is. But um, you could you could break these apart if you uh, if you wanted to. But I think this will do it for method one. Um, there are two more methods I can show you how to roll 3D text onto a, a curved surface. Thanks for watching.